Ruby, I said keep up the grass. Hey, get off the pitch, love. Ruby, what are you doing? What's she doing? Hey! Oh my god, it's a Karen! So, 73 yards. So, the premise of this episode is the Doctor and Ruby land in Wales, and, um, yeah, we're in Wales, and it won't matter for about 10 minutes. Like, 10 minutes, it won't matter anymore that we're in Wales. So, um, as they go through, as the Doctor and Millie go to Ruby, end up in Wales, uh, they find a circle, um, a, to be a magic circle, used to hide some dude, and, um, yeah, they disturb it, and um, the doctor goes missing, and that's kind of our premise here. As this mysterious person shows up, like just seventy-three yards away, we'll find that out later. And so Ruby is sort of left to kind of philander about, trying to figure out who that mysterious woman is. And to be fair, to be fair, Millie Gibson does a great job in her solo performance. Um, I can't think of any companion that would have done this this well this early on. But Ruby is pretty much a very confident companion. I think she's a bit too confident this early. I think end of the season, this might have worked out better. It would have felt a bit better. But this is effectively Russell digging into turn left. Like, hey, remember turn left? Our turn left was fun. You know, less doctor, more companion, unit. Like, you know... Uh, yeah, except no. Like, it's not, because the thing is, as great as Millie does here, I stand by what I said. Like, this would be better later in the season. You know, give Ruby's a bit more experience, more stuff to see and do. And I think we have a really good, um, I think a better episode than what we got here, just because it's placed later. Because really, Ruby seems kind of like, well... The doctor's gone. It goes on from there. Can't access the TARDIS? Well. And, again, later I would think that would work. I think she should be a bit more nervous. Granted, this is not her first time in Wales. Probably not her only time being, you know, lost and stranded. But, you know, a time traveler. It's a bit of a big deal. And... So, the real story is like this figure here. So, anytime someone approaches her, she says or does something that makes everyone just run off and not want to engage with Ruby at all. All right? At first, we think it's like, okay, maybe it's just the odd person. But when we get, when she gets back to, when she gets back home and with her mom, her mom says, like, well, I'll figure out what she's saying. Like, we're going to put an end to this. And whatever she said was so bad that her mother effectively disowned her. And it was not just kind of frightening here. And that was really the emotional stuff Millie Gibson just absolutely nails. Um, her mother has effectively abandoned her. Anytime someone talks to her, when Unit arrives, and Kate's like, yeah, we got this. We have agents trained in everything. We have plans for companions that have to deal with readjusting to life without the doctor. Because, you know, sometimes he messes up and you're actually gone for like six months and Guess what? You've been fired from your job. So, um, yeah, but you now have a bunch of skills that can be put to good use. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that's the weird thing. And when Kate hears it, Kate hears it, like, secondhand. She hears a recording. Well, like, recording. Like, she hears it through, through her, um, through a communicator. And she's like, nah, disengage. Everyone just goes off. Everyone just goes off. It is wild. So at some point, Ruby just goes, I gotta live with this. And this carries on for years. All right, like, Ruby goes from being 18 in this episode, in the beginning of this episode, to pretty much an old woman. Like, she dying of old age, pretty much. And it just... <sighs> it's an interesting take on it, but this is where it gets crazy. So, before Ruby hits old decrepit age, she finds out why she's there. Why... 
what this woman is, or at least what this thing is. It has something to do with the doctor, uh, with the doctor messing with that circle. I'm like, okay. So whatever was in the circle was freed. So what you could go with, if we're going to honest, be uh, try to examine it here, is that whatever the doctor, uh, whatever the doctor messed with. He ended up switching places with whoever was trapped in there. And that person is running for prime minister. And it turns out it's the person that the doctor mentioned at the beginning of the episode was going to be behind um, a nuclear war. Like he's going to fire some nukes. I'm like, oh, it's oddly convenient. That's what happened. Okay. Whatever, whatever. And so Ruby realized, okay, I have to do something with that. And the whole time, I'm just sort of, okay. And then what? And then we're getting into. Like when, like how this episode ends. So if you want to stop, you stop here. Um, I'll I'll tip the hat lower back in. Uh, so you just turn the sound off if if you want. And so after Ruby takes care of that issue, you think she'd be sent home? No, no, no. She realizes, okay, I gotta manipulate it so that dude there has to be next to the crazy lady that's from the circle and does the thing yeah it's it's weird kind of dark too considering what has to happen here um like it's implied a woman was had to be essayed um for this to happen for her to realize like yeah i've got to stop like the nuclear threat wasn't the big deal but you know he essayed a woman so now he definitely has to go okay sure sure um like had it been one or the other like as the essay happened before the nukes i'm like okay yeah, he needs to be held accountable. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, anyway. So then, after Ruby dies of old age, um, she's greeted by the person. And it turns out the person's, I guess the person's supposed to be Ruby? It's weird. And she's sent back to the day the doctor and her leave the TARDIS in Wales and she stops the doctor from breaking the circle so it never happens so I'm like okay what what happened if it didn't happen then why is it uh, it's, it's a it's a timey wimey thing at its finest and I'm like okay but granted granted as Russell's told told us in an interview like he wants to dig more into the magic more into you know the the sort of mythical fantasy element of Doctor Who, uh, so yeah, that's fine. Russell's not the first one to do that, so I'm not going to critique him for that. I mean, there's legit stories where the Seventh Doctor meets Dark Elves, so you know, it is what it is on that one. So ultimately, I think this episode is really good because of Millie Gibson. Had she been, I think and that's not a hot take either. I mean, had she not been capable, uh, this episode would be way worse. Right now, the, the story is weirder than anything else. Like, Ruby Sunday is a great companion, but I think she... Well, I'd say she's a good companion. Um, a lot of killing Ruby off so far, really, if you think about it. Because so far, she died in Boom, died in this one here of old age, and, um, yeah, if you look to other stories, like, teasing Ruby's death, it just seems... Yeah, I think Ruby's gonna die. But anyway, anyway, overall, this is the poor man's turn left. Because the thing about the poor man, about turn left is, we see who Donna is before traveling with the Doctor, we see who Donna is while traveling with the Doctor, we see Donna without the Doctor, and the kind of person she is on the inside, we see the insecurities that make her, Ruby doesn't really have that, so this episode seems kind of like a waste, Ruby's like, yeah, I live a normal life. It's kind of it. I just don't know who my parents are. That's kind of it. Otherwise, Ruby is a perfectly functioning person. She doesn't have any hang-ups. The mystery of Ruby is totally independent of Ruby's development as a character. Alright? She just wants to know, but she's not obsessed about it. I don't know. I don't know. So yeah, this is... This would be a good episode in itself, in a vacuum. Uh, I think it would be greater... Again, I, I'm going to say it again. It'd be better had it been played at the end of the season, like the penultimate issue before the big story. But um, really, 
knowing what we know going forward in the next two episodes, there, I would I would really have redone some things about Ruby's character. Um, but that's just me. That's just me. So anyway, with that, I'm just to close here. If you do the button, thank you. Feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe. What would you guys think of 73 yards? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Um, yeah, this is apparently because Gatwa, because I can't really pronounce his first name right. Like, apparently you have to pronounce the N, and I don't think I'm pronouncing it right. Um, I'm going to call it Gatwa's Doctor. Um, Gatwa had to still had to do filming for something else, so like, okay, let's do this one here. He's going to be on set for like five, ten minutes, probably an hour, depending on how it was, depending on, you know, what needed to be done. And go from there. There we go. And I'll catch you all later. This is Bucket Thinking signing off. Thanks for watching. As always, may your fandom serve you well.